So I'm not sure how to tell you guys this, but today's basically gonna be chaos. most important thing that has to happen today is we have to get our system on test because we have an inspection scheduled for tomorrow. I did text the plumbing inspector a photo of what we built last night and asked him, is there any reason we can't use these test plugs? Is there a code or something that says you can't do that? Haven't heard back from him yet. So right now I'll put myself out there. I think He's just gonna show up tomorrow. This is the guy we punched through the side of the sips last night. This will be a temporary vent. What we're going to do is we'll elbow up and we'll actually fill this with water and we'll use a head test um, to prove that the plumbing does not leak. I wanna get that done today in case there is a leak. And if there is, we've gotta get it fixed so we can be ready for the inspection tomorrow. These caps are tight, tight. This is inflated, inflated, inflated. That's still capped. All right, I think we're ready to test. <sighs> so what I'll have you do is go out and I'll have you just fill it with water. Okay, from up there. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yep, hose is already up there. Okay. And then I'll be in here just looking for leaks. Um, if there's any leaks, I'll just have you stop. There's nothing to do. Um, we may have to just bleed the system down, but Basically, the goal is to get it to where the water is right at the tippy top of that elbow that's mm -hmm. sticking up out okay. there. And it'll take quite a bit of water. It'll probably take okay. we just got water, so. 10 or 15 gallons. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys know what that is right there? That's water off of our roof. Oh, sweet. Yeah. That's, fun. that's right, baby. Oh. Roof's doing its job. So it's on like flood mode or whatever. Gotcha. Basically, just set the top okay. in there and pull the trigger. Yeah, you'll have awesome. to. Yep. That'll do. And then, yeah, that's on like full blast. Pretty so it'll take a long time and you'll start to hear like yep. I'm gonna go inside and I'll holler if you guys see leaks. Good shoulder workout. Yep. This is kind of risky because these um, caps right here are just held on with a hose clamp. And if they blow, <laughs> all that water is going to come exploding out of there. So, you know what? I think I might move our bath vanity just for that reason so it doesn't get exploded on. I don't hear anything going past our balloons yet. This pipe will actually fill first, the main pipe. And then when it gets clear up to that T, it'll actually come over here and fill these vents. So these will be almost the last to be filled. And then once all that's full, she'll have to fill just the vent pipe. If these caps are gonna blow, they'll blow early. And then it'll save us from making a mess over there. But I've gotta to wait to listen to these balloons here because if any water's getting by them, of course she'll never get the system full. Well, I don't see any leaks yet. Okay. So everything's going good. Still holding on. Yeah. Trying to find different positions. So you want me to do it? I got it, it's fine. Okay, you're getting close, I can hear I'm gonna it. I'm going to get flabby as a video editor, so. <laughs> I know, we're going to have to. Keeps my arms toned. 
what we're gonna have to do is tape like 50 pounds to your mouse. Oh my so god! So when you move it so around, terrible. it's like moving a bag of concrete. Like, uh, uh, yeah. That's a lot of water. Yeah, it's probably it's probably 15 to 20 well, gallons. Well, it's hard to say because the flood thing on this to me doesn't go very fast, so it feels like I've been here forever. But mm -hmm. oh, there we go. Oh. I think that's it. That's oh, it. Yeah. All done. There you go. Whew. So now, before you go too far, let's test and see if it's staying at the top. Oh yeah, it's sitting nice. right on the tippy top. You wanna see? Uh, sure. Come up here. Come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. Oh yeah, there she is. That's it. In order to pass, this system has to hold that water for 15 minutes. That's it. That's it. Because it's waste, and the theory is it's never gonna have any pressure buildup in it. Um, that's not true of fresh water. That's a whole different standard. But yeah, I want to go inside. If it's not moving here, that means our balloons aren't leaking. So that tells me what I needed to know because if the balloons yep. are leaking, this will just be constantly going down, right? And if this disappears, that means one of the cat blew, blew off and we should run inside and see what flooded. Yeah, that'd be terrible. <laughs> well, thanks for the help. You're welcome. And now we wait. So yeah, if it holds for 15 minutes, I mean, I'm happy. So basically we'll just fill it before the inspector gets here tomorrow, which is a complete crapshoot because he's a very nice man who tells nobody when he's going to arrive. He has come at 6.30 in the morning before, but I'm sure it's yeah. conceivable he could come at 5 o'clock in the evening too. So, surprise! <laughs> Thanks for the lift. You're welcome. I have to evict a few stink bugs first. Okay, dudes. You. See ya. Hey. You. Adios. See ya. Bye. We're going to start another project because we've got, what, one, two, three, four. We've got like five or six projects in the half done state. So we're waiting on the ridge cap. It won't be here for several days. We're waiting on the plumbing inspection tomorrow. We are waiting on, oh, I forgot to tell you. The electrician is coming tonight, hopefully, to kind of just talk to us and walk through the house. And what we're hoping to do there is something similar to the plumbing where we kind of just lean on them for guidance. Um, but on the more realistic side, what we're thinking is to have them either take over or whatever needs to happen to get power from the meter way over there into the house before winter because we can kind of work on electrical during the winter but getting the groundwork done i assume it's going to be groundwork has to be done now and well the first cold morning everybody around here starts thinking about winter and kind of puts everybody in a frenzy usually after labor day weekend and so anyway we're hoping he'll come by this evening so we're waiting on him and then we are also waiting on the window company to get that done. So we've got, yeah, a lot going on. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna attempt to try to figure out the fascia cladding, which is all metal, and then the uh, cleat, which is called a, it's called a rake cleat, and then the step rake, which is basically metal that will cover all the way from here, up the rake, and up over onto the roof, effectively drying in and protecting the eave. This is gonna be tough. I don't, I, I just don't see how this is gonna go easy. So let's fumble our way through it and if things go well, we might get one piece installed today. One of the challenges with this is that the, the fascia metal cladding comes down, but it needs to be furred out under the eave here. I'm thinking three quarters of an inch because we're wanting to clad the underside of the rakes and the eaves with something like cedar or a beautiful pine or something like that. So we want this fascia board to come down and overlap that to protect the end of those boards and also to kind of have a finished look to it. But this metal is just, I don't know, it's a wet noodle. And I'm one man on a 12-12 pitch, which means I can barely barely reach that end and i'm gonna have to use a ladder to reach this end of a 10 foot stick 
So I'm going to have to get creative there. And the reason we have to put that on first is I believe it's going to actually tuck underneath the rake cleat. And it's going to be overlapped by the step rake. So it's kind of a puzzle and it all has to go on at the same time. Thank you. Huh. I asked Alyssa to bring me some furring fleas, and she said those extra Z's kind of look like pizza. Oh, false alarm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Well, those didn't go very well. I thought for sure that would have sucked those a lot tighter, but I guess it's better than nothing. I'm hoping that will be a nice detail on the end of this, closing up this small step in the rake trim. Otherwise, bugs and things will get in there and, well, you don't really want that. Oh wow, oh that's gonna suck. <laughs> oh boy, well, at least I'll get to see up close and personal our roof doing its job. Oh wow, <laughs> uh, hey I have an idea. <laughs> there, now my head's dry. <laughs> ah, I have no protection. Oh my God, those drops are freaking huge. Oh wow, oh God. It's gonna get even better. Run for cover! I think I'm good! I think I'm gonna tough it out. I think I was just like looking for anything to find some shelter. I don't wanna come down. Holy crap, I can literally see the drops one at a time, they're so big. Hey look guys, the roof's working. Look at that. I know. You guys aren't as excited as we are. And it'll be over in about 60 seconds. Bye! Okay. But not before it gets more intense. <laughs> I think it's almost done. That'll do. I think fall's here. This is very fallish weather because in about one minute it's going to get ballistically sunny. The conclusion I'm coming to is that this is a two-person job. So I put these spacers in here that are three-quarter and tried to hold the metal against it to, to spacer that off with all the free hands that I have, because as you can see, we have to drill through the fascia and that cleat, just like I thought we would, because those holes intersect. But 
just because you can't even see it. I know it needs to be at the top of the sip, but you can see this is down probably well up there. It's a full, the full thickness of the sip, so almost a half an inch. And then down here, where are we at? Well, we're right on the sip. So I guess, yeah, just that. Like, is that one screw or two? There's two screws in there. So I think two people is what it's gonna take. Somebody's gonna have to hold this side, make sure it's right, hold that side, make sure it's right, and then we can fasten. I'm all about trying to figure out how to do these projects alone to free up Alyssa to work on other things, but <clears throat> sometimes just not enough hands. But I wanted to kind of get through this first step and kind of test this stuff out and see, you know, what does it take? How hard is it? Do things make sense? And then, you know, kind of make a plan. That's just usually how day one of any particular project goes. A lot of head scratching and very little work. So when we purchased the step rake, this hem is supposed to be open, but for whatever reason, when it arrived, these hems are all closed. So we're gonna have to open these hems because they actually slide up over this, this cleat, and then they crimp to that cleat. This cleat is such a worthless piece of metal. Like it's incredibly useless. It basically is just like a flat piece of metal. Might as well be a roll of like plumber's tape or something. I don't really wanna go through all the steps because this is not right. So this will all need to be taken back off, but it's a good kind of trial run. Um, I do wanna test this step rake to see, you know, does it work the way you think it would? This is really where two people is gonna become a huge, huge issue. Because this has to go over that cleat somehow. I mean, once it's fastened on there, it'll probably be easier to work with, but so difficult, so difficult. So there's a couple problems that I'm seeing. One, I've got the cleat too low, so the step rake can't get up high enough to get onto the roof. Two, well, I guess that's really the only major issue. So if we can get that solved, it's about figuring out that height and they don't publish that. They don't actually tell you what that height is. So I thought I had done the math correctly and maybe I just don't have the cleat completely on there. Well, actually I can see I don't have it on there. Probably really hard to see, but there's a bent part of the cleat. Well, there's a whole bunch of them. Look at that. Probably can't see that, but when you're trying to do hemmed hidden fastener, the cleat has to be flat. Otherwise, when you open the hem, it won't go on the hem. That or open the hem really wide. I may have to do that and then we can slide it on there. So I guess I'm gonna fuss around with this for a little while, see if I can get it sorted out. And at least I'll have the baseline and then we have to figure out a way to get another person in the basket. Well, I was able to get a portion of this roofing, a portion of the step rake to fit and it helped me identify several problems. Step one, this cleat is a little low, which I kind of had a hunch. It's currently set at about five eighths, and I think it needs to be closer to a half. That eighth of an inch will bring the step rake up a little bit higher. And it appears that this hem, which is, or this little jog, is supposed to be one inch. And it's looking more like it's about three quarters of an inch, which is a problem because we hemmed this rib into this panel at one inch. So the step rake doesn't like that. So I tried just bending this over to kind of shorten it a little bit and that satisfied the step rake. Um, so, and then actually the membrane here, which I knew would be an issue, my plan was always to tuck that down underneath the cleat to keep that continuous, but in the inter interest of you know trying to get this done, I decided just to cut this part off just for testing sake. And sure enough, that was definitely inhibiting or impeding the uh, step rake from, from working. So lots of discovery right now. I sort of have it in my mind that I may be able to attach the cleat to the cladding on the ground with something like a rivet or some sort of like double stick tape or something to make it easier to install just because it's so layered. The other side of me is asking myself, why are we even bothering with the cleat? Just thinking this through. Unfortunately, we have to put screws through this little ear through the roof. Those are the only exposed fasteners in this roof. But I guess if I'm honest, on the eave or on the rake, you know, screws are fine. 
I mean, they're just, I mean, they're on this, this face right here. So why am I going through all this effort to put this cleat on when I still have fasteners on the roof? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Like go through all this work to put this cleat on and open these hems and do all this stuff. I guess it's more like a look that we're after or that's the reason to do it because the whole point of hidden fastener in my mind is to make the roof more durable. I guess there's an aesthetic side to it. Oh my gosh, there's a deer. There's no way you guys can see her, but she's right there, right above the garden. <laughs> I'll bet she was probably eaten out of the compost pile, probably giving the uh, garden the stink eye. I don't see any babies. They would definitely have their babies with them this time of year if there were any. Oh, what to do now? I don't know. I feel like this was my plan was to get up here, stare this project in the face, kind of get my head around it, and maybe mull on it for a day or two, and then go for it. Let's try something. Thank you. guys huge progress first of all I was able to get one full section done one man progress had to work through some of the kinks and kind of make sense of where the cleat goes and stuff but I see just a perpetual problem this cleat material is a joke the bend on the cleat doesn't even remotely match the bend on the metal unlike the offset cleat which was an inch deep this is only three eighths of an inch deep. And basically in handling the cleat, it just gets all boogered up. So when you go to engage the hem on the cleat, you have no clue. You have no clue if it's working or not. So I put this on, slid it into place, and I can see that that's not even, not even close to attach to that cleat. Part of it's because the cleat is practically facing down and this hem is, is way out. So, like I said earlier, I don't know if it's worth fussing with this cleat even. I mean, a few fasteners on the fascia is not gonna hurt anything. They'll have a really easy life and all they're doing is holding this piece of trim on. Stuff is so frustrating because Industry people just deal with it. They've got all the little tricks figured out. They've learned they've adapted to the material and They're like, yeah, no biggie deal. We just put cleat on and put fascia on and we go back about our business and they've come up with hacks and tricks and tools and Gidgets and gadgets and gizmos and stuff and here we are read the instructions install the metal doesn't work so annoying so ironically the metal panels are the easiest part and then for whatever reason, when it comes to your trims and everything, looks to me like we're getting ready for a battle. That's what it looks to me like. So I had this experience with, what was it? The offset cleat. We put this double bead mastic tape underneath the offset cleat, and you basically get one shot to put it on there because once it sticks, it's not coming back off. I'll probably end up damaging this panel trying to get this back off that's a good thing you want it to be sticky you want it to do its job but you basically get one shot and even though i dry fitted this and did all the did all the things we're basically off the cleat now took nothing to pop off the cleat and there's no taking this trim off without doing damage so i think i'll put one screw in it which will hold it in place it won't go anywhere and then i might do a little bit of research 
talk it over with Alyssa and see if we just want to ditch this whole cleat business altogether. Honestly, I don't even know that you need screws. I don't even know that you need screws in here because if you have all these screws in here, what do you need a screw in here for? As long as we can attach the, the cladding, I mean, maybe one or two per panel. Well, we'll make it three every four feet. Psh. Or we can fuss with that cleat and the hem and yada, yada, yada. What a mess. I hear bugaboo, first of all. Second of all, just got a phone call from the electrician. He's on his way. So I've got to get this wrapped up because we want to chat with him. Pretty important. We chatted it over and, and Alyssa agrees with me. This makes no sense to go through all this effort for this silly step break. I think what we're going to do is just abandon the cleat altogether. And that'll make this so easy. Basically, all we'll have to do is put the cladding on, get that correct, and then basically set the step brake down onto the double bead mastic, punch a screw in here, find where it's happy on the eave, and then punch a screw in and hold it tight. In the interest of making sure I don't miss the electrician because their time is hard to come by, uh, I think I'm just gonna punch a screw in here and we're just gonna leave this for now. And then maybe, hopefully, 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 tomorrow, um, get up here and start making some headway on this guy. I think what we'll do is probably just leave this hanging on the eave here and I'll probably take my spacer blocks out and when we put our cladding underneath here we'll fasten through this and through that cladding and that'll make for a nice finished look hopefully on the underside. Well, we survived the walkthrough with electrical and I think we're feeling very optimistic. It's really helpful to have somebody who's not, not only willing to just like do the job, but willing to give us guidance. So we got to go through basically the entire basement, the living level. We're excited, stay tuned. We'll be trying to share as much of that stuff as we can. Two things, three things. One, we're hungry. You hungry? Oh my God, I'm so hungry. Yeah, I'm starving, starving. head's pounding. Um, it's dark outside, so we're not gonna work on the roof. Um, two, I wanna go double check the plumbing really quick okay. and see if it's still holding test. Okay. And three, there's a batch of ice cream outside that right. I started and I have not finished, okay. but we could probably eat before we do that. Oh yeah, it's right at the top. Looking good. Oh, what's this? He is like full of it. He's what do so we got? Wired. What do we got here? Are you in razzle dazzle mode? Huh? Are you in razzle dazzle mode? Well, he's purring. Oh, yeah. He wants down. He's got places to go, Mom. Things to do. It's dark. That's when Bugaboo gets out of bed. Right. He's also a vampire. It's cold, though. He'll come cuddle with us. Oh, right. he'll be coming in yowling to get under the covers, oh, this yeah. little weenie. Goodbye. Okay,